in Excel of what you know a paycheck might look like. Just do a, a quick register, just so you can kind of imagine the accounts that would be impacted from an accounting standpoint. So I'm just going to format this Excel worksheet. Just do this fairly quickly, and I'm just going to say this is going to be. Uh, what am I doing here? Numbers, currency, boom, boom. Let's say this, no decimals for now. And so I'm just going to say, all right, let's say we've got uh, employee one and employee number two. And I'm going to say the earnings, earnings for, so employee one, generic employee one and employee two two generic employee two let's say that the earnings are hold on i put this way down here what happened let's delete that let's make it bold so let's say employee one earns one thousand two hundred dollars for whatever pay period a week or whatever we're doing and then we're going to say that the withholdings will at least be the withholdings for for taxes the federal taxes so that's fit federal income tax which is based on the tables you get from the w-4 information and so on quickbooks hopefully will help you to deliver the w-4 and the employee can kind of do that so i'm just going to make up another a number here let's say it's like 180 or something and then we're going to say that we have the social security which is right now i believe it's something like this times 0 0.062 that's the employee portion and then we're going to have the medicare which i might misspell that's going to be something like this times the 0 0.0145 and then you might have state taxes you might have other withholdings that you have to put in there uh, as well for like 401k voluntary withholdings and so on but just as a simple scenario let's do this and say this is the net check so the net check is going to be the sum of these. So that's how much the check is going to be for. Let's say employee two earned 2,500. And let's say the withholdings for FIT are, are uh, 230. And then this is negative this times 0 0.062. This is negative this times negative times 0 0.0145. And then I'll sum this up. And then we have the total for all of our employees. I'll sum this up this way. And so boom, there we have our total that I can add down like this, sum up like that. And we can also double check it adding this way. So, so there's our numbers. I'm gonna make this like centered. Let's make it black and white on the headers let's put a bracket around this just so we can see it a little better let's put an underline here so so we can kind of visualize this if i did this internally within quickbooks then i would have to have the detail for each individual employee in terms of their earnings on a pay pay check by paycheck and on a year to date basis so i can provide it to them but if I'm having an external payroll provider do it, then I really only need the total that's going to be going into my into my system so that I can get my financial statements correct and the payroll provider can kind of do everything else. Now, if I was to record this into the system, then in total, you would say, okay, the net check is going down by 3,007. So if I go back on over here, ca cash would go down, of course, by 3007 you got to be a little bit careful of that because when it's coming through the bank feeds we can see that it's going to actually be two checks that are going to be for this amount and this amount but total cash is going down by 3007 you've got to be careful of that so that when you do the bank reconciliations you can reconcile them and that's where the bank feeds can come in and then we're going to have a, a liability which will be these three which adds up to 693 so that's going to be the 693 in the liabilities area of 693 and and then you're going to have the difference uh that's going to be the net check and then the 3700 that's going to be what's on the income statement as earnings so you've got payroll or wages so wages 
let's see this way wages will be 3700 expense and then the cash will be going down in total by the 3007 and then the liabilities should go up by this uh 6693 if i did a journal entry for it for example payroll expense if i just do debits and credits would be going up by this and then payroll it's not pay roll liabilities would be going up in the credit direction for the sum of these and then we've got checking account would be going down by that right and then we also have the employer portion of taxes so employ employer employer taxes which we have to match social security medicare and we might have futa too but just we have at the minimum social security medicare for our two employees and you can then sum it up this way for the total and sum it up this way and then you can sum it up this way if you wanted and sum it up across like this boom and you can double check it by adding these two so there's our total liability so then you would also have payroll pay payroll tax expense which is our portion of the taxes debit and then once again payroll liabilities i know there's misspellings and whatnot all over the place but that's the general payroll transaction that would happen and you can record it on an employee by employee basis which you would have to do if you were doing it internally or you can record it as a total which you might do if the payroll was done by an external uh, payroll provider and you're just trying to enter the, the system into your system in such a way that your financial statements will be correct. However, you got to note that as they clear the bank, they're going to be two checks here. So when you do the bank reconciliations, possibly with the help of the bank feeds, that's going to be something that you got to kind of be aware of so that you can uh, properly reconcile. But that's the general idea. Now note that it it might be possible I, it is possible if you're if you're working with a third party provider to even say hey look I want to be on a cash based system as much as possible. So instead of me taking your reports that might look something like this and recording the transactions looking something like this periodically I'm just going to wait till everything clears the bank and I'm just going to record it to one account called like payroll expense which is misspelled up here but like payroll expense. So that would mean when the checks clear the bank, I see that check clearing the bank. I'm just going to record it to payroll expense, decrease the cash. The other side's payroll expense. I'm just going to record this to payroll expense. And then when we pay off the liabilities, I'm going to wait and just record these to payroll expense as well so that you can automate the system on the bookkeeping side. So if you're a bookkeeper and you're saying, I'm trying to automate everything, I just want to record everything to payroll expense. And then at the end of the year, you or your CPA or tax preparer, as well as your payroll provider can then say, okay, I'm going to get the payroll reports from my payroll provider, breaking out the year to date information that looks something like this. And I need to get that to the CPA or tax preparer so they can make my financial statements correct, at least for tax preparation and possibly for external reporting, possibly just on a yearly basis. And they can then make the adjustment necessary based on these reports to account for to account for the the liabilities as of the cutoff date 1231 the end of the year to account for the breakout between payroll taxes and payroll expense if necessary for tax preparation purposes you know at the end of the year so these are just some ideas that you can you can go through if you're a bookkeeper or or you're thinking about adding the payroll